multiply the speed together from the two values, unless you changed it manually. So we have a fresh new Unity project. So the first thing we're going to do is go edit project settings. We're going to pull this one out under the player tab. We're going to scroll down, make sure we have active input handling set to input system package new. Now we want to apply that. Awesome. So once it's restarted, I also want to quickly set our API compatibility level to .NET 4.x. We'll just wait for that to load. Now we need to go to Window, Package Manager. We'll wait for the packages to load. And these are all the ones that have been installed, but we actually want all of the ones in the Unity registry. So once we've selected that, we're gonna find Input System and click Install. Once that's installed, we can close this set this back to the inspector now I'm gonna right click create input actions down the bottom and we can just call this our player input actions so if we double click on this it's gonna open up an input actions window now we have an action map an action and a properties so our action map can be used for stuff like what sort of environments we want to be using. So this one can just be for our movement. Next we have the actual action. So if we click on that, we can see on the properties that the action type is a button. We want to change the action type to a pass through value and the control type is going to be a vector two. So now in this action if we click the drop down we have no binding so we can just delete that binding by right clicking and deleting and we can click add and we can add a 2d vector composite and we'll just call this our uh, our moving our move and our action can be called move as well so our up binding we want to use whatever path we want to go up. So in this case, I want to use the W key on the keyboard. For down, I want to use the S key on the keyboard. For left, I want to use the A key on the keyboard. And for right, I want to use the D key on the keyboard. Make sure once that's done, that you click save asset. That's crucial. Now we can just drag this somewhere and leave it for the moment. So once we've saved the asset, if we go into our assets, and click on our player input actions on the inspector we can generate our c -sharp class and we can also change what sort of c -sharp file we want to call it so player input actions is fine class name can be player input actions we can just click apply and this will generate our c -sharp class so as you can see we've now got an automatically generated input actions script now let's create a player to use our input actions. So I'm going to be using this sprite pack, link in the description. To set it up, I'm going to set it to multiple for the sprite mode. Pixels per unit, I'm going to set to 16. We want the filter mode to be point, no filter. Make sure you click apply. Then in the sprite editor, we can pick whatever sprites we want. I'm going to be using this little knight here. So we can just drag a box around. And once we've got that all selected, I'm just gonna click apply, close that. And now you can see we've got this little character. So we can click and drag this character in. Now we have a little character on the screen. I'm gonna name this to our player. We're going to add a few components. The first one being a box collider 2D. And we can edit this so it's just around the player. And if it's top down, we probably don't want it to be over the head. We also want a rigid body 2D. We want to set the gravity scale to zero. And in the constraints, we want to freeze the rotation. 
we also want to add component and click new script this one's going to be called player controller press enter it's going to create this new script and if we double click on the name here it'll open it up in your code editor of choice the first thing I want to do is grab a reference to our player input actions. So we can grab a private player input actions. We'll call this player input. Now we want to change this start void to an awake void. And inside the awake void, we're going to set our player input equal to a new player input actions we're going to have a new input manager for our player and you can create multiple inputs if you have maybe a multiplayer game on the same keyboard or a multiplayer game on different controllers the next thing i'm going to do is get a reference to our rigid body so we're going to have private rigid body 2d we'll call this rigid body 2d rb next we want to get a reference to our rigid body. So we're going to set RB equal to get component rigid body 2D. This is going to grab our rigid body component that is on our player. So now I'm going to create a new private void on enable. And on enable, we want our player input dot enable. Next, we want to create a private void on disable. And we want our player input dot disable. So we're going to disable our player input. The next thing we're going to do is change this update to a fixed update because we're going to be using physics. The first thing we want to do is get our vector2 value from our player input and store it in a vector2 so we can use later. So I'm going to say vector2 move input going to equal to player input dot movement dot move dot read value vector two next we want to set the velocity of our rigid body so I'm going to go rb dot velocity is going to equal to our move input vector I'm going to multiply that by a speed value now we can set our speed value by typing in serialized field which is just within square brackets and private float speed and by default, we can set it to something like 10F. Now, what is this serialized field section? This allows us to see our speed in the editor and even change it within the inspector. So once we finish typing this code in, we can click save and we can go back into our project. So now if we hit play, we press up, we go up, down, we go down, left we go left and right we go right as you can see if you press a and s or w and d we go the same speed so that was a issue that was in the default unity input manager is that it would multiply the speed together from the two values unless you changed it manually with code but now it's all the same if you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe for more content coming soon. I'd like to thank my Patreons for supporting me on Patreon. Please support me on Patreon if you can.
also join my discord server and with that i'll leave you to it thank you